How you doing? I'm, I'm fine. Just a little nervous. Never okay. done something like this. Cool, dude. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So, luckily for the nerves, you only got 100 viewers. So, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what are you here for, man? I'm here to generally, like, I struggle on certain roles, like, specifically carry, and uh, I tend to excel sometimes at offlane, so I have two uh, two replays. One is a safe lane carry Sven, and the other is a offlane undying. I just want to get, like, what am I, like, I, what am I doing wrong? I, my MMR tends to range from 1.7 to 2.2, and I can never seem to break out of it. I you feel like that something's for a while, wrong. or what's up? Yeah, yeah. I've been playing since like 2013, and it's just been up, down, up, down, only in that range. And I, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Okay. And uh, basically, all I can tell you ahead of time is that uh, the lower you go down in yeah. MMR, obviously, the yeah, more basic yeah, the tips I, will be. I'm aware of this. Okay, cool. So we'll just uh, have you seen my other beginner? I, I, I consider this beginner. Like when I say beginner, I just mean like a lot. I, of... I'm I, I know I've seen I've seen yeah. the replays of your old uh, of the okay. people you actually coached in this. Just making sure. Okay. Uh, cool. Right on, dude. Well, let's go ahead and uh. I'll send you. Send me this... the ID. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Sven one. Okay. <laughs> So we got about an hour and 15 minutes or so, so we'll make All sure, right. I tr I'll try to keep track, make sure I get to both uh, replays. Uh, <coughs> what's happening? This was a disastrous game. And yeah, my computer's being really weird lately. Like the last two days it's been... I updated my drivers. Can't be my drivers, so I don't know what's going on. Dead it just froze. One second. I will be sharing screen once I get it up. I'm pretty trash. All right. I leaned against this uh, a really aggressive tri lane, and it was just uh, I didn't know what I could do. Watch it when your screen <laughs> didn't forget augers. Uh, so first things first, this, this just can't happen. You can't start with quilling. Um, even if you weren't against an aggro tri lane, best case scenario, you're against an axe and you're a melee hero. So you'll be taking a lot of harass. So one of my first lessons I always talk about is making sure you think about what your lane's going to be, potentially. Um, and every time you think about that, playstyle-wise and itemization-wise, you have to plan for the worst. Like, meaning if you plan for the worst and better things happen, the worst case scenario is you'll have, like, extra regen. Um, yeah, than you should yeah. have. Uh, but if you do this, and then the lane doesn't go so hot, suddenly, two minutes into the I, game, you have no tangos. Like, and you have nothing. Yeah. And I 100% yeah, guarantee, guarantee that's going to happen, even if you're just against Axe. So, it does. Um, this is something that... Yeah, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm just making sure yeah, I no, say it. No, you're fine. Um, so all I'm saying is you, you, you literally just have to... You, you have to you have to plan somewhat for like the worst lane and the best thing to do like on Sven I think because of your stun you should at least have one mango I probably have two um, with the new patch but like um, I, I just don't think you can pretty much ever buy quelling on carries unless you're against a treant I think would be the one exception and even then I would have two sets of tangos like worst right. case scenario I'd have two sets of tangos um, it was mostly due to the fact that I tend to rely a little too much on the plus assistant. Okay, gotcha. And it popped up, and I, I just bought all those items, and I was like, I go into it. I usually can predict the lanes really well sometimes. I just wasn't expecting Vengeful Spirit and the Crystal Maiden to go top with the Axe. I thought it was just going to be I got, I, I'm just going to tell you straight up, though. If it was just Axe, this is still bad. Yeah, 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 because okay. it can just run me down. So my point I want to say is right now is that the plus assistant, 
Okay, I'm not gonna flame it any more than this, but like, <laughs> simply watch three Sven replays from Professional Dota, and what I mean by that is like, literally watch the starting items of Sven replays from Professional Dota, and tell me how many. Okay, watch 300 carry replays <laughs> from Professional Dota, and tell me how many of them have a Quelling Blade in their starting inventory. And if you can see more than five, then we can we can come back to to this replay and maybe talk about it. So I'm not right. trying to be a smartass about it. I'm saying that no, this I, is like never correct. I, I, <laughs> I see never. what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah, see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do player perspective. Okay. So yeah. that it is a big deal. Okay, like it will affect your MMR rather drastically to have the wrong items. I will lose lanes if I buy the right item or buy the wrong items. So if I will lose lanes because I buy the wrong items. You will lose lanes if you buy the wrong items. Obviously, you know if you're getting aggro tri lane, it's a bit different. Um, it does. It doesn't start off as much. It, they eventually start rotating the crystal main into the mid and then the top lane. So, but at first, I felt a little confident against him because he wasn't playing too smart. I was getting some denies off of him, and of course, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I should be last hitting, but uh, I'm wasting mana quite a bit. Like, see? Yeah, that's why I would have, like, double mango here, too. Yeah, yeah, I can see why. I can see why, because instead of popping that clarity, I could have popped the mangoes, and I would have I would have been ready to go for another fight. Um, this okay. Is... So, I mean, I mean, this is, like, a classic 2K game. Like, just a shitstorm in the lane. It's just, um, it, it, that's, that's exactly what I said. It was just, it, it just team deathmatch the game. So the main thing. Wait, let me rewind here. Okay. This will come in here. So. Um. Just trying to think of this smart way to to ask. Basically, like, have you seen any of my? You've seen my coaching sessions, so if if, if you have, you know, what are my two things? I say like ninety percent of laning is. Ah, uh, I just watched that video too. Ninety percent of the laning is like uh, oh, 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 uh, creek, uh, equilibrium. equilibrium. Okay, equilibrium. equilibrium. What's the other one? Uh, I, I don't remember the other one. The, creep aggro. The, I don't creep aggro. Okay. Uh, I know they changed the creep aggro from uh to to uh like one minute. You can't actually pull them anymore until the one minute. I'm not talking about like that. Do you know what creep aggro is? It's usually when I go to attack an enemy, the creeps will aggro me. Okay, so what is, do you know creep aggro is used for? I'm not trying to be a smart answer. Do you know what it's no, for? No, 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 I know what you're doing. No, I do not. Okay, so why would I ever want to move creeps? To bring it closer to my tower? How about I don't want to be, I don't feel like that specific spot in the lane is good. Okay. It doesn't need to be to my tower. It can be... Literally, I ask you the question, do you fight axes on top of creep waves as a melee hero? No. So, if your creeps... Who... Aren't your creeps your own enemy against axe? Yes. So, isn't creep aggro super important to drag the enemy creeps away from your creeps? Yeah, I would say so. So, how many times in a Sven versus axe lane where you are not going on him should... This happen? Uh, never. Okay, so these are like crucial concepts that I, you know, I'm I'm going to at the basic level like these they matter so drastically in lanes that it's insane. Like, so the way I see it is usually when I when I have these sessions, I will coach people. I'm just going to tell you like to give you an idea and everyone else. I coach people that first off. There's steps to every process. You're gonna if you don't use creep aggro at all, I really can't teach you much past that, other than watching my other videos and coaching sessions. And I'm just gonna leave it at like creep aggro is simply moving the enemy creeps to a safer or better position. Every lane it's different. Like if they have a support that's sitting over here ready to gank you, then creep aggroing the off laner and pulling them this way can be really good. If they over here, you pull them this way. If it's an axe, you pull them away from your creeps. You know, it's like every hero is different. Um, sometimes you're pulling them away from the hero because it's like an Ursa and you're scared of the hero. Um, whatever 
like that applies more so to off lane. Whatever yeah. the reason is, creep aggro applies in every <laughs> single lane. So you just need to use it. So the point is that if you're not using it at all, I really can't coach you much past that. Um, and the way it comes back is I'll usually have like 3k students or two like high 2k, 3k. They'll be creep aggroing, and to me, it's like laugh. I'm not trying to be mean. It's like it's funny because they're just randomly creep aggroing. They're not actually doing they're it for doing it strategically for any reason. They're just doing it. So my yeah. point is that I need you to get there first, where you're doing it like all the time. You just need to be creep aggroing. You need to understand. You need to get that 500 radius in your mind. Do you know what 500 radius I'm talking about, or no? The for the creep aggro. Yeah, like where, that's. Uh... That's how far yeah. they aggro you from? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so, like, you need to get that radius, like, in your mind, because then you can start dragging specific creeps rather than others. You need to, like, get the timing down, how long they chase you for. They chase you for 2.3 seconds. You can't re-aggro for 3 seconds, so that means there's a .7 second window that you can't aggro them again. Like, in the old, like, I'd say, like, a year ago, you could drag creeps, and then the second they de aggroed you, you could aggro them again. So, like, it made it so you could literally drag the creeps as far as you ever wanted. But now it's yeah. limited. So, my point is, it's a very important mechanic. It affects every single lane. So, you just got to start toying with it. Um, major thing. You just got to toy with it. See what happens. Like, ask yourself, you know, how could I help myself with creeps in this lane? Meaning, like, what could I do? And, like, Axe is a great hero to practice against. Obviously, you can't choose the hero you're practicing against. But Axe is like a perfect example um, because you simply can't afford to do this. You know, you can't be next to the Axe. If this guy was any good, imagine he's... He would just, he would just rush me. He would just walk at you. He wouldn't even, yeah. like, have to do anything. He would just A-click you so that his <laughs> creeps aggro you, or that your creeps aggro him while he's attacking you, and then he just spins on you, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, like, he does, like, th that's why... You know, creep aggro is all about thinking what's their play, how does their hero win the lane, positioning wise. Like, creep aggro is just about positioning. Um, and the last purpose of creep aggroing is that you can interfere with CS because you're changing when creeps die. Like, creeps are hitting each other, but now they're hitting you. So, it, it you can basically dictate when creeps die. And so, um, at the higher level of creep aggro, you're basically able to make people miss CS because you creep aggro. And the point is that if you know that's why it's there for positioning as well as making people miss cs now the next step is to do it yourself and look for look for these occurrences like this one that i just pointed out to you um yeah and then you can watch other players and see how often they creep aggro and ask yourself why they're creep aggroing because every hero every lane everything's different right um yeah and so i'm noticing like they're not really harassing you all that much um, yeah because uh they 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 didn't they didn't feel confident enough at first because of the Rubik and then they just start they just start mass stunning me and then it all goes downhill from okay. there. Okay, yeah, I got you. So major thing is just like I'm gonna point this out since it's available. Just notice how many times you'd be much safer if you just like drag this creep to here. Like this is just yeah. another example, right? Um, like you seeing like what if this Vin stuns you and then he goes on you right here? You should be super scared to walk like anywhere past here, in my opinion. Like I'd be super scared to walk anywhere past here. Like. This Venge, like, if these guys were any good, they obviously would be punishing you. And the point is that if you start thinking about when they can punish you, you'll also think about when you can punish them, and you'll shit on them because they're 1K. But if, because nobody's doing it. The point is you're all in 1K because you're not doing it. Like, it's it's really that simple. So, um, like, you're not going to necessarily get punished for it as much as you should, but you will be able to punish them for it. Um, okay. But my point is here also is another carry tip. And I even did this wrong yesterday, but um, to emphasize to you and everyone else, the difference in that case is I'm getting harassed by 7K supports. <laughs> and, you know, so my point is you can start focusing. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a douche. I did this. Yeah, my point is that yesterday I did this and I actually talked about it being a mistake. And the point is I make mistakes too in these type of situations. And the goal is that like, as you get better at these things, obviously you're going to gain MMR, and then the players you're playing against are going to be better at these things. So the only way you'll continue to gain MMR is to continue getting better at these things. It's not like creep aggro is something that you learn, and then at 4K you hang it up. Oh, I'm done. I, I learned. I learned creep aggro. We can move on. You know. You know what I mean? Like it's something that all these concepts constantly require you to get better. Okay. So basically, the concept that I'm going to point out to you is that um, if your support is pulling. 
that means your next creep wave's gone. Okay? Yeah. So if your next creep wave's gone, if you play passively, how many creeps are you going to miss? I'm, I might miss the whole wave. Maybe this? Honest, I guess. Yeah. Maybe this. Look, no, no. If you play passively, how many creeps are you going to miss? Uh, I'm going to miss probably one to two. Maybe this one, dude. You have this Just creep one? left. You have this creep left. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, a lot of creep... Okay, a lot of lane aggro, meaning who can be aggressive, a lot of the time is based on positioning and number of creeps you have. And the number of creeps can affect it differently based on, like, it, it favors the axe, all that kind of stuff. But if... You're taking trades. If creeps are hitting you, it changes the trade. That's the point I'm trying to make. So if there's usually like six, if there's like five enemy creeps and one ally creep, that's almost always a very dangerous place to be. Because yeah. if the enemy was good, they'd say, oh, if he fights back, what's going to happen? That's the question he's, that, he's that you ask well. yourself. You'll be taking five creeps worth of damage while they hit you and you hit them, while they'll be taking zero. So that's like yeah. a very favorable trade for any matchup pretty much few matchups are an exception where like you're level five and they're level two but like if the matchup's even it's always that way so i like you can watch it happened in my terror blade game okay you know what fuck we're gonna take the time so notice what you're doing here what would a good venge player do right now it's done okay so oh, oh I'm, I'm i'm so when your support is pulling realize you're not going to miss cs because you don't have creeps all right so if you're in a threatening lane like this one i'm not talking about when you're in a good lane when you are in a like 1v2 or 2v2 type lane you need to like try to see that your support's pulling you need to like mon like like do your best to out of the corner of your eye check for support pulls and this is something that I'll mess up once every 10 waves or so. And so the goal is that you, you know, you probably don't do it at all. So we want you to check it somewhat. Okay. So this is what will happen if they're, if they're, if they're good supports, when your supports pull and you do it, you just did. Waiting for it. Okay, like you see that, what if I had yeah. just, what if I had just could. sat back? You could have gotten back to All the I did was not get one to nine if I sat yeah. back. Yeah. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay, the point is that if you're in a contested lane, this moment is when you are the most vulnerable, period, like, to anything. Okay, so, yeah. and even in 1K, these players are going to randomly kill you, not realizing that they capitalized on this moment okay but yeah they're, they're gonna do it so the point is if your supports pull realize your obligate what your obligation as a carry what is it it's to last hit and not die it's the last hit and not die that, that obviously denies are really good okay but the point is like going for denies and stuff like you did pointing that let's, deny let's out see. to you is like you gotta gauge the yeah the worth of each deny like is it worth putting myself at risk of dying or taking 400 damage to avenge stun plus axe hitting me and four creeps hitting me in order to get this deny like that's and that's something that seems like Which a relatively advanced works. concept but at the no, end of I the know, day i'm looking i'm telling you to look out for those spots <laughs> where your support is pulling because it's almost always when you're most vulnerable and so my point is when your support does this I don't want you to necessarily say, oh, BSJ told me to play Afraid here. You need to think, is there anything that the enemy could do to me that I will take a lot of damage and it bothers me? Like, that bothers me. Like, if I'm a Nix, like he's level 2, I'm level 5, I could give a rat's ass if my support is pulling. Okay? Like, I just... Yeah. I'm gonna man up... If the guy fights me under a creep wave and I'm level 5, he's level 2, I, I just, just don't care. Him. I just yeah. don't care. You know? So... That's the point, is I want you to realize you're at least under threat, so you play accordingly based on your magic. And I would, and I think here you would take 400 damage at least. 
to avenge yep. son and like axe hitting you or something and then i i saw this happening over here in that lane as you saw i kind of just yeah. went over and i just didn't bother with it because i was like i can't fight that yeah and then i was and then i did that i i I don't know what I was thinking in that moment, because, like, I get called here, and then there, I think Venge ends up stunning either me or the Rubik, and it just... Um, I, got so I definitely decision. think if you're ever in a... I mean, Sven should have a point in Warcry at level 4. Yeah, every game. once again, a little too reliant on the plus assistant. Okay, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I got you, I got you. I'm not... That's, like, I can't really... I don't have much to say to that other, other than the fact that, uh... If you, if you want to make sure, like... If you're at your bracket, I think it's super important for everyone that you build the right items and level the right skills. And that seems so basic, but it is required. It's a part of Dota for everyone. So, like, all these things that I consider that I'm mentioning to you are things I check off. So, starting to use creep aggro. Checking for support pulls. These are just, like, fundamental things that you can do. Um, and... If you don't do them, all it is is hurting your MMR. Anybody, like, what I've noticed is as I go up the MMRs, like when I coach, is that it, it can vary from person to person what they're missing. But as I go up in MMRs, they're missing less. Like, they'll, like I'll, I'll see you missing 10 things, and I'll see a 4K player missing 4 or 5 rather than, yeah. rather than all 10. Um, so this is a lane where, simply put, Ask yourself, going into the lane, do I want to be near Axe? Ever. When's the no. only time I want to be near Axe? Uh, oof. Only time I really want to be near Axe? When he's not around a creep wave. Okay. Because then he can, just, he can just spin me to death. Do I want to trade with him? No. So when do I want to be near Axe? Never. Maybe when I'm killing him? That's one of the other things that came to mind, but yeah. Okay, I, that's the only I, time. Is that all wrong? Alright. Okay, that, that so, is not wrong. Okay, so if if you don't want to trade with them, and so what are the conditions for you to go near Axe, based on what we just said? Low HP. Okay, well every condition you can possibly think of. I know, I know. I'm not trying to be. Yeah. No, I know what you. I know. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Every condition uh, you can possibly think every, of. Well, one, I don't want creep wave a creep wave to be around. Okay. Uh, if we have kill potential on him. Okay. Uh. Generally, if he's got no mana, because then he can't call me, and then he can't get extra okay. armor, so he can survive. And you can think about that too. Okay. Uh, if he doesn't have the venge, if he didn't have the venge, I could okay. easily, if he's easily alone. go on him. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the main things I I would think of is that he can't be near your creeps, and you need to have kill potential. So the two, the first two you named. Okay. Yeah. So, do you watch much professional Dota at all, or do you like hear me talk about? Professional uh, Dota I, I watched I watched a lot of TI4, TI5, I was really okay. big into TI6, I missed a lot of... I couldn't really watch a lot of the majors this year due to my job. So. Okay, gotcha. So, my point isn't about Professional Dota, I just want to know how much you keep up with patches or the meta, is basically... Oh, what I, I, keep, I keep up with the patches, as, okay. as I said before. So, I how much do kills game. matter in this, mat, in this patch? They matter more uh, or less than CS in, in the landing stage. Right now, I still think it's a little bit of an early, like early game, early to mid game thing. Like late game doesn't really exist much. At least in my bracket, it doesn't exist much because like most people are pushing down towers by like. Exist much. Uh, well, I mean, is like t uh, generally speaking, a lot of these, a lot of the players in my bracket tend to push towers like quick, 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 and the game ends with a sniper, a uh, sniper just going nuts. Well, I'm asking you right now, how much do kills matter in the laning stage? Not really. I would rather I would rather I'd rather have a high CS count than a high kill count. Okay, so and it, honestly, at any role, it, like four denies is more than a kill in the current yeah. meta. So just to give you an idea. So with that in mind, meaning that kills are worth very little compared to CS. What might be another situation that you would go on Axe? Try to force a kill. Why would you try to force a kill on Axe? I do not know. Is he stopping you from CSing? Okay. Is this stopping you from CSing? What he's doing? Mm. No. Yeah. Aren't you just yeah. a carry? Don't you just want to hit creeps? Yeah. Like, so, it seems so simple, but if my goal as a carry is to CS, and kills don't mean shit, I'm level 4 and he's level 2, 
I simply have to ask myself, is what he's doing stopping me from CSing? No? Okay, whatever, fuck off. Like, he can do whatever he wants. They're dual laning to cut your creep wave while you're yeah. getting solo XP. They're literally sharing XP while you're getting solo XP. You can get your quick treads, and then you can start doing this, and then rotating here. And doing, like, like you know what I mean? Like I, you... My mindset for that was like, oh shit, Rubik's probably gonna die, I should go help him. I, I probably should here's how it works for carries. Is what the opponent's doing making me not CS? It, the, like, there's more advanced to that. There is more. It is more advanced than that. But at the end of the day, if if you recognize that first, we have to that we have to get like the you know the bases down. So if they're not stopping you from CSing, like if this axe is playing up in your face, he's level five, you're level four. You might have to try to kill him, okay? Because otherwise. He's eventually going to start. Otherwise, you're not going to see us anyway because yeah. he's alive. So, like, you got to kill him. Um, like, all the lanes that, if you ever watch, the lanes that I go for kills for are the ones where they're stopping me from CSing. Like, or I've got an advantage. Like, I'm level 5 and he's level 3 or something. So, I'll go for a kill because it's favorable. But, like, the first thing I want to point out is you don't miss CS to get kills, period. So, like, my point is, unless the guy's stopping you from CSing, you just don't do this. this just is, don't bother with it. Yeah, them. just don't bother. And so, if okay. they're killing your supports, every time it comes down to decision, is it worth saving my support, or can I away. save my support in order to, like, am I, am I going to miss two creeps? Okay, if this support dies, the next question is, this a little more advanced, but you can start thinking about it, is does this change the lane? Does my lane become drastically worse if my level 2 Rubik dies here. Like, and I'd say, no, I'm getting, like, I'll get more XP as a whole from these creeps than these do get, these two guys get sharing a creep wave gonna, and, yeah, killing, and killing gotcha. Rubik together. Okay. So because they're splitting the XP yeah. rather than... So this is the last thing, notice this, like, these decisions will cost you like this. Where yeah, you tango, suddenly, man. you have one, you have two tangos, and we already talked about, um... We already talked about the regen problem at the start. So if you ever take a trade with Axe, starting Adams, if you ever take a trade with Axe, what's it going to look like? Ever. It's going to look like... Can you ever take him down from full health to zero, taking no damage? No. Well, you take a lot of damage. Yes. Okay, so if that's what an engagement with Axe is going to look like, what item has to be in your starting items? Uh, regen, so salve, okay, tango, salve, period. mango. Salve. Yeah. You're going to take a lot of damage if you ever trade with Axe and go on him. So if you ever... So if you don't have a salve on a melee hero against Axe, are you allowed to go for a kill? No. Ever. No. Because no. if you go for the kill, best case scenario, you kill him, you have 200 health. Mm -hmm. With no salve. And the Venge could... If the Venge is still alive, she could easily... Keep this in mind. This is best case yeah. scenario. This is not like worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you kill him and have 200 health with just tangos. So when the axe comes back to lane, what's going to happen? He can easily come back and kill me. Yeah, so what the goal of kills is to make the lane look better after the kill. I gotcha. So if you don't go into a lane with the preparedness to get a kill, so it's like if you don't have mangoes or clarities, if you go for a kill on axe like you did at level 1, what happens when you don't? What happens when you use two stuns to kill the guy? That would have no mana, and, and then, then he can he come back to lane. So yeah, exactly. you need to be able to ref like that's what I mean by gauging how the lane's going to play out. And best case scenario for you is first you can you can think about these things, just imagining them, and you have to think harder. Like you you say you rely on Dota Plus Assistant. If you want to gain MMR at least rapidly, you just have to think in depth even at a, as a 1k player you can make relatively in-depth decisions and what i mean by that is compared to the decision level making you decision making level you've been doing you can make high level decisions okay so okay. um these are things it's just like if like so next case is so for future like other matchups is like if you go for the kill and now you have this issue, you have to ask yourself, like, could I have played that differently? Or, like, did I just have to do that? Like, like, and, like, if you were to play against Axe without me coaching you, you'd be like, when I went on him, I lost, like, 400 health. Could I have done something to not lose 400 health? Well, no, if I want to kill him, I have to be in melee range. And if I'm in melee range, I'm going to tank spin. Okay, I can't do anything about that. I'm going to take 400 damage or whatever. 
So I have to have a salve. Like these are yeah. all I'm saying is like these are things you can start looking back on after they happen. Or it, but while also trying to think about them before. So like the point is think about them before, make your best guess, and then like my point is your inventory should never have less than a tango and a salve or two sets of tangos in the starting items. And the salve is almost always dependent on how you think the lane's gonna play out. Like the point of a salve is one against a hero like axe for you to kill him and then be able to refill but two if you don't have a salve i just want you to understand what a purpose of a salve is if you don't have a salve and the other guy has a salve what might he be willing to do in a lane like that he could easily take the damage back off after i've taken a bunch of damage salve up come back he's willing to force a massive trade yeah like you just said and so that's something that's very important if you understand that so if you see in your region which 1k players are going to do that the offlane axe went quilling blade tango stout and you have salve and two sets of tangos and a mango maybe you'll be like hey support come over let's just like harass this guy down to 200 health i'll lose a lot of health too but i'm gonna salve up right after suddenly the lane's over like actually over like it, just it forces old. it forces axe to constantly go back into the yeah, jungle. I, I mean, he'll literally. I mean, at level one, he ain't doing shit. So yeah, yeah, he's gonna that, 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 lane yeah. against you with a third health, like, and then the lane's over. So my point is though, like, the, understanding what a point of a salve is. Tangos are like consistent regen, while salve is for burst regen for when you go for kills, like I mentioned. Or just knowing if you have a salve and he doesn't, what you can do with it, and knowing that if you're in a lane where. If they have a salve and I don't, what's it going to look like? And then it's like, all of a sudden, you can't afford to take trades with his axe, so if he's really any good and sees you have no salve, he'll just... Uh-huh. He'll just shit on you? Like, that's like that's how I well, look at it. Go well, ahead. as you can see, I've been... I, I've gotten into the, the 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 thing of, like, ferrying salves to me. Okay. Like, sometimes. Like, okay. as a, like, I, like, right there, I have a salve in my inventory. I don't remember if I... Yeah, I don't... I get to use it right there, so... Like, I've gotten into the, that habit. So I probably should do it. My, I'm saying your goal is to have it. So, more okay, no, 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 no. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is a reactionary purchase. Okay. That's okay. A, that. Okay. Dota is about knowing what's going to happen to you before it happens. That's what the that is. Other than pushing your buttons correctly, that is literally defining your MMR. What I can define by your MMR, by anyone's MMR is how well they know what's going to happen in this game, okay? That is actually 80% or more of your MMR, is knowing what's going to happen to you before it happens. My main mistakes in this game yesterday, I talked about them on stream. It was this Void game. I played, like, really well for, like, the first 12 or 13 minutes or so, and then every mistake thereafter was me not expecting something. It was my R- my Magnus, like, blinking in and RPing yeah, without me was- following up, and then I hesitated and... The fight went poorly. And then yeah, I, I, I used Mask of Madness that. when he had Halberd and I didn't know. And I Mask of Madness got Halberd and just died. <laughs> to a, You know, it's like, these are things where if you're thinking about what can go wrong before it happens, it doesn't go wrong. Like, you're just ready to deal with it the second it happens. If you know what your capability is as a hero against the other hero, you're going to make the right decisions. And if you don't know these things, you're just going to fuck up. You're just going to randomly yeah. fuck up. So, my, like you said... This salve is reactionary and it needs to not be, okay? Like, it okay. needs to be a, I know what this lane's going to look like because I asked myself what happens when I go on Axe, and then this happens. So the next uh, the question is, after you salve here, because you figured yourself a salve, mm-hmm. after you salve, are you never going to take any damage ever again? No, well, <laughs> I, that's not, that's not going to happen. Okay. I'll take a lot, I'll still are continue to take so, what else would you need on the courier? Probably Tango? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a problem that you're addressing before <laughs> it happens. Like, you're going to need Tangos again. I 100% guarantee, and you're not going to have All it. Right. So this is an example where it's not acceptable, in my eyes, to just buy this out. Like, yeah, it should be in your starting items, and then if you use all of that region at the start, which is very... that Which does happen, okay? It does happen. And there are times where, like, I'll even know that I'm going to have to ferry myself more regen, okay? But I can't afford to start the game with 12 tangos or some shit, you know what I mean? Like, I can't 
Yeah, yeah. I, I can't have that in my starting items. So, like, I know that I'm going to buy as much regen as I can fit into my starting items, but eventually I'll have to ferry myself regen again. Um, one second. Mm. So, basically, the idea is you'll learn... If you learn to have pattern recognition, that's honestly a very important skill for lanes, because almost every lane is incredibly re repetitive. So the next skill that I mention is side shop. So every chance that you have to go to the side shop to pick up an item that go for it. you can purchase needs to happen, okay? Yeah. It's just like I, courier yeah. usage. If you don't use the courier when it's available, you're probably going to have to wait an extra two minutes rather than, like, the ten seconds that it could happen because of your teammates, right? That's because of your teammates. Things stopping you from going to the side shop. Lane equilibrium. Enemy heroes. Missing creeps. All these things. So if you miss opportunities to go to the side shop, you're either going to miss creeps, you're going to take a lot of damage from any heroes, or you're not going to go at all. And then you're randomly using the courier. Do you think your SF yeah. could use the courier right now? Well, <laughs> uh, the reason why I felt like I couldn't get to the side shop, I was a little, a little afraid of the axe, I'm not going to lie. The, uh, so I just kind of ferried it to me. So, uh, I just, I don't know, I, in this, in this, I tend to fear Axe. Axe is one of the people I tend to, uh, not want to fight. So what's your excuse right now? I didn't want to go to the side shop. Why? Uh, I thought he was, I thought he could be waiting in the side. I thought he could be waiting in the side shop for me. I didn't know where he was at are the you, time. Are you screen sharing with me right now? Yeah. What am I missing? I'm not trying to be an ass. What, what am I missing here? Oh, shit. Well, then, I guess I don't have awareness. I didn't notice that the Rubik was there. I just... I sometimes don't Even think... Even if the Rubik's not here, what's, what's that change? <sighs> Nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying... So, basically, in the nicest way possible, you're actually just making a bullshit excuse to come up with something. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, not even, that's not even, like, close to accurate right. in this case. So, that's like, right. my point is, accept that you're <laughs> missing opportunities to go to the side shop, okay? Literally, just accept okay. it. Like, I told you you could have gone to the side shop. I saw at least four times this lane that you could have gone. Yeah. And I'm pointing it out to you now and just accept <laughs> that, like... You're just not doing it right, okay? Like, it's so like it's funny. No, what happens is in my high MMR games, I'll tell somebody they're doing something wrong, and they'll tell me something about some other player on the team doing something it's, wrong, and I'm I, like, I, I know. And I'm I, literally I, I, like, all you're doing is scapegoating what you're doing wrong. Making, right now. making, making a <laughs> bullshit excuse. Yeah, just and I'm like, that literally has nothing to do with what I just said to you. Anything. So that's that's why I pointed this out. Like, <laughs> you had gold to buy a glove of haste, and so rather than the next time you're struggling to get to the side shop, you'll be missing the full treads rather than missing like you'll miss the belt of strength to finish the treads rather than every part of the treads um you know what i mean so that's a yeah <laughs> it's just funny. sorry about that uh, it's just funny I, I just laugh it happens in every bracket so uh yeah fast forwarding so that's another example of creep aggro where you don't really want to walk up so what you do if the creeps are coming to your tower is you need to be like right here so that the creep sees you and then follows you. You don't need to do anything fancy, but you need to kite the very edge of it so that the creep will follow you. And yeah, Dota Plus is shit. This is literally never correct. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I eventually stopped skilling a little bit into it. I was like, man, I should have probably got the freaking war cry. I survived a little too long on that one. I tried to go deny myself, but yeah, I didn't have enough HP. I was tread switching quite a bit. What this crystal maiden is doing stopping you from CSing? What's this? Uh, she's pulling the wave. Okay, is that stopping you from CSing? No. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. The point, the overall point is you need to choose your battles. Yeah. 
So every battle that you've taken, they're not stopping you, and you're going out of your way to contest them for, you know, whatever, like, whatever the reasoning is, the reasoning needs to shift to, does this inconvenience me if they're doing whatever they're doing? If whatever they're doing is stopping you from CSing, okay, yeah, go fight them, go fuck with them, like, whatever it takes. Um, but if they're not, then you just, you just don't, okay? Like, you just leave them alone. Leave that Crystal Maiden to drag the creeps. If you are level 6 and the offlaner is level 3, obviously do not let the Crystal Maiden drag creeps, okay? Like, okay. Um, my point is, know that every time you're going to fight them, you have to be in the lane asking yourself, do I actually want to fight them? Does Is Finn a hero that in the laning stage thinks, I want to fight people? No. What's he want to do? Harass. He, he literally wants to cleave creeps, get oh, yeah. his ult, Damn. get a Morgan oh, Mask, cleave jungle <laughs> and then go back to lane cleave some more that's all yeah. Sven wants right if yeah, Sven yeah, yeah. never hits a single hero for 20 minutes is he okay with that yes okay so that needs to be something you think about right on okay. the other hand something like a life stealer or a jug those heroes might look to be more aggressive because they have toolkits to be aggressive they have with the, they have the i know you have stuns and stuff but none of this is good for trading it's all good for just killing people and if you do it once then usually you don't have mana to do it again. So what that means is you have to choose your battles wisely. So if they're not stopping you from CSing and you're getting last hits and denies, okay. So the next question is, what if my supports are pinging to go on the guy? That's probably something that happens a lot, right? Quite a bit. Okay. Yes. Let's see. I need to pull... Followed by the flaming. <laughs> uh... So what's the only deter determinant factor in the landing stage for whether or not you go for kills? Uh, if I were to say, if we have if we have one or two more people than they do, like if the mid comes the gank, we could probably get a kill off the okay, mid. So if you're, let's laner. reword this question: If you're three v one, when do you not go for a kill? Three v one? Oh. Uh. Well, I'm not sure. What are the two crucial concepts of landing? Creep, uh, creep aggro and creep equilibrium. Okay, so oh, what? When does, when does it matter? <laughs> Hello? Sorry, give me a second. Is that your girlfriend? Oh, my little cousin. Oh, your cousin. Okay, same thing. Yep. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm sorry, could you uh, repeat the question? So... If I told you the two core concepts, when do you not go for a kill when it's three v one, or two v one? If it's an axe, if they're if they uh if they have more creeps than I do. If my creeps are down to like one and they have more creeps, I'm taking more damage than than that because I'm taking damage from the creeps and the heroes. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. So, you're right about that, but it's like so in the wrong ballpark. Okay. So I'm not going to I'm going to be straight with you. I because you spent $50 on this session, I think it's really important and I'm not trying to sell out and soak more money no, from no. you. You should it's sign fun. up for Game Leap and watch my coaching simulation course and tips and tricks videos. Okay. It will enlighten you, all of them. Like <laughs> the starting items video, the creep aggro video, like if you're willing to spend $50, I assume you're willing to give effort and time to getting better. Right? That's, that's, yeah. I'm assuming that, right? So, yeah. I want you to do that because the idea is, lane equilibrium is super important. Okay? That's how, you, it, it literally matters for everything. It, everything in the lane. Like, I don't say this on stream, I don't go over the, the concept of the dead lane in the mid game, the lane equilibrium in the laning stage, and creep aggro, because they apply sometimes. Okay? Like, they actually apply every single lane. So my point is, I have a support that's going to ping me to go for a kill here. We're 2v1. If I'm going to ruin the landing equilibrium, which means pushing it, I'm not going to go for a kill. Period. I'm not going to go for a kill. So, watch this. The whole time. I'm not going for a kill despite whatever my disruptor's doing. Sitting here, keeping the lane as is. Denying as much as possible, keeping the lane back, pulling it back. This is the mindset with lane equilibrium. Look at where it's been. You need to be in a lane? So I wouldn't play with Sven, because it's bad practice. It's a hard hero to, to do it with. Any other carry that doesn't cleave is, is, is good. Um, literally in a carry that doesn't cleave. Make it so that you're in a lane against somebody, and the lane never leaves this area. Ever. Okay. That's a good practice for you. Like, 
Like, every movement you make, you're not allowed to push it. Like, you're just not allowed to push this creep wave. So what happens is you want to give yourself a cushion area. Which, what I mean by that is you want to um, make it so the lane's slightly pushing into you. Because if the lane's slightly pushing into you, and you make an aggressive move, when you make that aggressive move, what's going to happen? When I make that aggressive move? You're uh, dragging enemy creeps. Yep. And that's going to push the wave, because they're attacking you instead of enemy, right? Cre instead of yes. your own creeps. Yes. yes. So if the lane's slightly pushing into you, that allows you to go for aggressive plays, because when you're done making the play, the lane equilibrium will be back to normal, rather than pushing. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's what that whole video I wanted you to watch, like, when you watch that okay. coaching simulation, no, course, it talks about that concept. So, like, notice this. You. I'm just going to fast forward. I'm not going for a single kill this whole time, because the lane equilibrium, look at it. I literally ping saying, I'm you're not, I'm not coming. You're yeah, you're keeping it right yeah. where you want yeah, it, right so, outside your tower range, so that if yes. they do come to gank, you can go back to it. Yes, exactly. this is the safest position. It gives, it makes it the most dangerous for the offlaner. And notice how it's slightly pushing into me, okay? And now I may look for something. Now I may look for something. There's two enemy range creeps. Now I look for something. Why? After I'm done with this, look at the lane. Because the lane is going to be pushing towards your tower. And I'm just going to come right back to it. So when this exactly. guy dies or takes a lot of damage, he's fucked. But, in your bracket, what will happen is people just go for kills. So what happens is, you'll do that level 1 kill, kind of like what you did on that axe, and the lane's suddenly going to be here. And then that axe is just getting, like, level 3 or 4 for free, okay? This is how people get dumpstered, is by having lane equilibrium, okay? Like, it literally, like, this guy dies? Is he returning to a situation that's better than what he left? Like, is this... No. Is this good? No, he's returning to a level no. 4 Slark who's near his <laughs> tower, right? He's a level 4 Slark to a level 2 Mag. This lane's over, right? And it's all lane equilibrium. That's all it is. I didn't go for a kill that entire time you because of lane equilibrium. The creeps and then the minute tower. the lane is pushing into my tower with two creeps, two enemy range, right? The second my disruptor says, let's go for a kill, I go for a kill, okay? So I'm telling you to pick your battles. The first step is, if they're not contesting your CS... Fuck them, like, fuck them, whatever they're doing. <laughs> leave them alone, okay? Just leave them alone, alright? Yeah, right. leave them alone. Um, but the next step is, once they are contesting your CS, you know, managing lane equilibrium is super important. That's, I, I'm gonna have you watch that video, because I, there's not, like, it's a very, it's a very, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, it, I got you. It'll save, it'll help me. This will save us to get, to get to stuff that's, I can't teach you from videos. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, let's go here. Uh, so obviously we talked about these fights not happening. I will, I will, uh, I'm probably going to only watch a bit more of this replay. You primarily said the lane, and then we'll watch the off lane. So okay. we'll make sure we get both games in. Um, okay. So the next question you want to ask yourself around this point in the game is, do you want to be in this lane? Do I want to be in this lane? Not really. Okay. So that's a, so simply ask yourself that question because it will determine whether or not you want to leave. Okay. Um, so what I mean by that is, first off, if you don't want to be here, what should you always have in your inventory? A TP scroll. Okay, because when you see an opportunity to leave, that allows you to leave. <laughs> like it's really that simple. Yep. Okay, so that's a that's a great thing. That's a first. That's a first step. So right now, you're scared of the lane, right? Yes. So, if you see this Crystal Maiden, what direction should you run? Uh, oof. I should be running towards my base, shouldn't I? You should be running should at the Crystal the Maiden. <laughs> oh, at, at the Maiden. Because okay. isn't the lane the scary area? Isn't this where... Okay, what hero is almost <laughs> always a part of the gank? Axe. Axe and Crystal. The offlaner. The, the offlaner. Lane. Yeah, exactly. So, Axe, wherever yeah. that guy is, is where you should not run if you're afraid of getting ganked. Am I wrong? Like, if you... If it's eight minutes flat, the offlaner is not showing in lane. Where is he? He is going to be probably uh, somewhere nearby in the fog. Eight minutes he flat. Yeah. On the eight minute mark, where will the offlaner be? If he's not showing in lane. Jungle. Eight minute flat. <laughs> right on the eight, right on the six minute mark. Right on the okay. four minute mark. Okay, I got you. I got you. It Where, immediately dinged on me. The bounty room. Okay. So, if Crystal Maiden runs at you at 8 minutes, you don't see Axe, what direction are you running? I'm running towards the Crystal Maiden. At 8 minutes, you don't see Axe. 
Where can you assume he is? He's in the bounty. So what direction do you run? <laughs> I don't know. Left! Because isn't he here? <laughs> like, isn't, oh, he, like, oh my God. isn't he right here? I'm making an ass out of myself. No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm saying, like, this is what it means, like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, people tell me, okay? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to show you, got, no, at the end of the day, how, quite frankly, obvious these things can be and how stupid you can look for not thinking them. You want to ask yourself the right questions, okay? This, I know you're only 1K, but I know you know that Rune spawn at 8 minutes. Offlaner's, like, picking them up. Yep. They're either going to, like, there's only so many places an offlaner is going to be. They're either here, like, jungling, they're either on the rune, they're, or they're in the lane, right? So, like, whenever you get ganked, at all times, a important thing to do that you can get better at over time is thinking about where you're going to get, if you get ganked, where you're going to go. Like, what happens? Like, so my point is, I know Axe is here, like, this entire lane. I know if I get ganked, he's going to be a part of it. So I know that if I ever get threatened, I'm going to run away from wherever Axe is. So... I'm going to try to monitor to my best capabilities where Axe is, and when I see this Crystal Maiden and I see this Axe, I'm not going to run left. And then you don't die, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's that, you know, these are relatively... Even if, she, even if she frostbites me, it'll go... By the time he gets there, I'll be long gone. Heroes kill you in pairs most yeah. of the time. The games get a little more complicated when the heroes start solo killing you. But, like... So, you just need to think of, like, what combinations of heroes are required to kill you. So, do you like this lane? No. Does Sven farm jungle just as well as he farms lane? Yes. Why are you here? <laughs> well, you want some more? You died twice, yep. you want to be here for some more? You, like, you, you enjoyed that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No Very I simple. So, I made an entire video on your first rotation as a core as well. So, like, and leaving your lane, okay? So, the only obligation you could potentially have to this lane when you're in this spot is what? If you don't want to contest the axe, but yeah, maybe... Just go into the jungle. Okay, so you jungle, but what may be the only obligation of this lane you have? You may not be able to contest the lane, but what can you do... To defend my tower. Okay, there you go, okay? So, the only time you should ever come back to a lane like this, potentially, is to defend your tower. And a lot of times, this is when you can give your supports the lane, but you can just say, hey, guy, if you have to ask yourself, can my support defend the tower as good as I can? If they can, then I can go into our the rule of thumb is, if a support can do it, why would I do it? That's what supports are for. They literally yeah. do things that we don't want to do. Buy wards, smokes, pull creeps, you know, like they do things we don't want to do ourselves. Like, so if, yeah. I, can, if I don't want to be here... And my support can be here. Why am I here? You know, I, I, that's the that's that's what they're for. So I, I I'm just gonna I'm just, I'm I'm gonna emphasize again. All of this stuff will be in videos, but I want you to see it. I want I wanted to comment on to you live because you need to yeah. see it happening to yourself before you go into these videos because it's important. Like for a lot of players, that I feel like this rotation should have happened two deaths ago. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's because now I'm behind. For people and... who watch my sessions, every MMR bracket, you eventually get to the right place eventually. It just takes you two extra deaths, eight extra minutes, etc. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, like, to get there. So, you, and that the point is that you had to be reminded two or three times that you shouldn't be top. Rather than knowing ahead of time, this is what the lane looks like, this is how it's going to go. The minute I die again, will it be better the next time, or will it happen again? That's like an important thing to ask yourself, because there are certain lanes where you will die, but uh, it doesn't really change the lane. And I talk about those on stream. I'll be like, yeah, I, I died, that sucks, but it doesn't change the lane. I'm coming right back. Like, I'm still winning the lane, even if that happens. Like, but I wasn't winning the lane. So yeah, but you're not winning the lane. So if you die and you're not winning the lane... It doesn't. It's not going to come back. It's not yeah. going to be better when you go back. So in those type of lanes, you need to ask yourself, what are my options? And so maybe jungling, maybe rotating to look for a gank. That's why Matumba Man ganked as a level five Lena yesterday, obviously, or today. That's obviously like a very rare exception. But there are games where like I've ganked as level five Ursas because I'm like, well, I can't return to my lane. I can't jungle because I'm a level five Ursa with no sustain. I guess I got to go do something. And like. I just ran to the enemy safe lane and ganked him at five, like, five minutes into the game. I'm like, okay, like, that's not something I was planning on doing in the beginning of the game, but I asked myself, what are my options? 
But as a Sven, you know, Sven recovers by farming, right? He doesn't recover by killing people. That that's what Sven does. So Ursa, on the other hand, I'm not gonna Kills. farm I'm not gonna farm my way back into the game as an Ursa, right? So if I'm behind, the only way I'm doing anything is by killing people. Um so you guys are looking to contest Roche. Okay. So at this point, I've said this again time and time again in sessions. So much went wrong in the laning stage. I want you to watch those videos, trim up your first 15 minutes, your game will look way different. Like, okay. at this point, the game's gonna be unrecognizable, that anything I coach from here, it's just really hard to, really hard yeah, to Yeah, 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 I, I So I let's make you. sure we get that offlane game. We have about, you know, 20, 25 minutes left, so let's, you got that, you got that ID for me? Yep, cool. should be it. So we're just gonna talk about, in this case, the exact same fundamentals from the offlane perspective, okay? So we had a session on this. Uh, I might be able to point you in the right direction if you never saw it. It was like a axe off lane guy, um, maybe like a month or two ago. Uh, if you did, you see that or no? I did not. Okay, uh, I may just point you in the direction of that, um, such that anything I remember talking about in that session, we can make sure you get in your. Um, here, let me just. I'm gonna link it to you in a second here. Because uh, I remember some of the things I talked about in that session, and people found it really helpful. I think he was about your MMR too. So, okay. Uh, uh, I like I like your approval. Okay's. So I, I I'm trying to be as uh. No, I know you're a little nervous, man. I, I know I'm a little. No, uh, I, it's not that like a lot of people would be intimidated by this. I'm not. I'm just a little nervous. No, I, no, I know. I got you. No, I'm so when I say nervous, I I know I come off strong. So yeah, see. no, I I've seen it before. Uh, here it is. Uh, it was actually, yeah, it was a month ago. So I'm gonna link that to you in... Dude, who's the one guy that downvoted? <laughs> I'm looking for you out there, fucking ass. Okay. Check that out when you get the chance. Another, obviously, more, you know, uh, another thing to watch. So I'm not huge, uh, a huge fan of Undying as an offlaner, just in general, because especially, um... If you want to gain MMR for the sake of the only way you really win the lane, win the game for your team is by like shit stomping the enemy core in the laning stage so bad they can't do anything um, with like no farm. But like you don't gank, you don't like create space, you don't do anything like that. You just kind of team fight. And yeah, you're, you're just a tombstone. Yeah, and so I think that my my recommendation to win games is to either be ganking heroes like Legion, Axe. Ricky. You know, I'm not a fan of Ricky. Yeah, I mean, because okay. he's a bad laner. Okay, so I want you to be like decent laning heroes that gank or split push. Gank okay. or split push. So, like, the reason why those heroes win you games is because if you split push properly, you'll just out farm them and win that way. Or if you're a ganking hero, you can just be the one that makes things happen when nobody else does. And that's your way of kind of solo carrying the game. Like, I don't think tide hunters and and dirges yeah. and and stuff like I'm, that are gonna be winning you games. Like, I'm honestly not average. a fan of tide hunter in general. Oh yeah, I'm just saying though. Like, if you yeah, pick yeah. a baden and learn what it means to Are, pressure the opponent's tower with a helm bomb and like watch what people do with that, and you just spend your entire game buying a helm bomb and running down a lane, like. You'll actually win a lot of games because well, I most people yeah. don't know how to deal with it. It's hard to deal okay. with, and I'm 7K. Like it's hard to deal with. Like it's hard to know what to do, and I know exactly what to do against it, and I still sometimes struggle. My point is, same idea with the items, by the way. Same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Abaddon is one of my more successful heroes. There you go. In a way, 61% so. out of like 50 something games. Yeah. Okay. So you have a lot of Abaddon games. Okay. So yeah. my recommendation is, um. Oh, yeah. Like, my point is to play heroes like that. Understand okay. that you're yeah. either a ganker or a um, pusher. Or a pusher, and those are the type of heroes that will win you games. But so we're gonna watch this. So you're just manning up like crazy. Okay. That's kind of how I, I tend to do that a lot with this hero, and it this it it went back and forth on this. Okay. We kill each other. So. Guess what the beauty of playing offlane is when you're trying to transfer knowledge from what I taught you as a carry? What? Oh. Creeps. No, yeah, so here's the deal. You're the disruption in the offlane. The carry is the person that wants stability, 
you're the person that wants chaos because at the end of the day, offlaners do rely on CS, but they primarily rely on levels, okay? And they just need That's to true. have, yeah. So they pri they just need to have the lane where they're not being zoned out of XP range and getting no last. Like you just don't want them denying creeps, so you you have levels. That's the point. So if neither of you is getting any CS or denies, who's winning? No one. Aren't you winning? Oh yeah. And carries he's not, actually needs CS. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's not getting any CS. Okay, That's so I'm saying like if aggressive. I'm saying that if you're if you're stopping him from CSing. So we literally said in the laning stage as Sven, why would you go for kills? As the Sven. If uh why would you go for kills? You would uh ugh, if you're not laning right. Well, we already one, mentioned they... this. We already mentioned yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm just late. making sure it's a repeat answer. Why are we not going for kills on Sven? Because or, farm's more important. Okay, so when do we go for kills? When you have kill potential. When, and he's when the enemy stopping me from hitting creeps. Yeah, yeah, when he's stopping me, kill potential and stopping me from hitting creeps. Okay. Exactly. So Sorry. what is your goal in relativity to jug? Is your goal to kill this jug? My goal is to prevent him from blast hitting, farming creeps, and uh, Okay, there you go. That's caught. it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah stopping yeah, yeah. him from hitting creeps. <laughs> okay. So and that's I, I kind of was hyper aggressive against them. Leave him alone. Is he hitting creeps? Oh, no, I should have left him alone. He has okay. no salve, no creeps being hit. No salve, no creeps. Yes. Leave him alone. Like, okay. if he is not hitting creeps, do you give a fuck? Whatever no, he's doing, I shouldn't. I whatever shouldn't. in the world he's doing, does it matter to you? No, right? Like that—that's the point. It doesn't matter. So, like, you do this, perfect. Everything till this moment. Great, okay? Like, you didn't care about CSing. You, like, while he was CSing, what was he trying to do, right? You were trying to harass. What was he trying to do while you were trying to harass him? He was, tr he was trying to get creeps going. Yeah, he was right? To blast it. And that's what bad carries are going to do, because they don't creep aggro and <laughs> run away from you. Like, good carries would creep aggro and dodge you while you're doing this crap, okay? Like, and be getting CS. But bad carries are not. So, your first step is, to, okay, great. You capitalize on the fact that he's bad. Perfect. That's, that's, that's fine. He's not hitting creeps. Leave him alone. I, I should have. Leave him alone. Like, All if right. he's not hitting creeps, his game is miserable. So, leave him alone. Like, they, they, like just back off right now. Like, it should have been way... Like, the minute that you see this jug not hitting creeps... That's when job I is I've done. got it. Job okay. is done. And that's a very important fundamental of this patch, is like... Watch high-level games, too. Like, whatever the offlaners at the advantage. They just push me away from creeps. And then they back off. Like, that's their point, is like... As long as I'm not CSing or any time... So, the point is... You were punishing him for CSing, am I wrong? That's what you're doing? Yes. So, I'm... continue doing that. But don't go okay. any further. Like, every Literally time he walks up for... cut the line, right? Yeah, there. cut the line on... Anytime he wants a CS, he's going to have to go through me. Anything else he wants to do, he can go do it. Okay? If he wants <laughs> to go hit a neutral camp at level 2, okay. Like, I've got control of this creep lane. Like, that's all I care about. Um, so, let's see here. Yeah, very hyper aggressive. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I played I played a little too hard aggressive. Um. So, I think it's actually correct that you that you play aggressive, but is your point of aggression to kill the guy? What's the point of the aggression? At my time, at my, my my train of thought during the match, it was it no. I'm saying what should it be? Yeah. It should be to prevent him from farming in general. Okay, keep, okay. Keep the lane under his tower, so it makes it harder for him to last hit. Yeah. So basically, your goal would be to contest him while he's under tower, just to piss him off and not commit so heavily. You're basically like an on-off switch, is what I'm seeing. And what I mean is like you're either not aggressive at all, or you're like really aggressive <laughs> and so like we don't like to some extent that's correct in some circumstances but like my point is i want you to be thinking all my purposes is to disrupt this guy so if i'm gonna dive do you know how tower aggro works i made a whole video uh, on it tower aggro it see 
No. The tower well, aggro to me, if it always, whenever I tend to be too aggressive, the tower just focuses me, so I'm gonna guess that's what it's doing. Okay. So I can't show you tower aggro range. Okay, can I do it? I know the I know okay. the range of the tower. It's okay. a, it's a generally so large radius. This is seven hundred. Yeah. This isn't a video, but I'm gonna chop it up real quick for you, okay? Just, for, just a quick Yeah, quick. Just a quick sum. Tower range seven hundred. If you A click an enemy hero within five hundred range, it will aggro. Tower. You. Okay. Yes. So if you I, aggro, if you a click a hero when you're here, I'm fine. You're fine. And so the way a aggro works on towers and creeps is that if you a click a hero, the entire map, meaning creeps and towers, check to see if they aggro you. That's how it works. The entire map of creeps check. So what happens is it puts a global cooldown on that aggro for three seconds. You cannot aggro anything again. So if I a click the jug from right here. I can proceed to A-click him again in the next three seconds anywhere in here, and I will not draw aggro from the top. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. you can use that for diving him. Like, while he's under the tower hitting these creeps, you can, like, A-click him when you're right here, spend the next two seconds walking in, hit him once, and then back off. Kite this range. It's 500. Get a feel for it. Go into a private lobby and have a 500 range indicator around you as you practice A-clicking somebody underneath the tower. I made a whole video on it. But it'll help you in these circumstances where your only purpose, like, say you're trying to fuck with the jug, this is what you do. A-click right here, so that it sets the cooldown to three seconds, right? Then you run in, you decay him, hit him once, then you walk to here, do it again, walk to here, do it again, walk to here, do it again. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. It's that 200 range. <laughs> okay. That's, okay. That's, that's pretty strong. That's why I make videos on this stuff, yeah. It'll <laughs> help you a lot where you're doing that exact same move, and you took seven less tower shots so you're yeah. suddenly you know you're at much higher health much higher probability of being successful really good players are really good at it like really good at that tower range thing something i only started using maybe last year or so yeah notice what are fucking offlaners doing at four minutes this will help you you know as a <laughs> carry player to think about this kind of stuff like as yeah. an offlaner i told you to think about what are you trying to do in relevance to the carry and he, just he, he yep, just, just, just trying to stop him. That's all. Like trying to stop him from CSing. Sorry, to clarify. So yep. if he's not CSing, we don't give a fuck. I also think that one point in decay or one point, sorry, in solar rep is really good. Rep. Obviously, I okay. told you not, you know, not much about this hero, but this is your team fight. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm so, very aware. No, of no. So I... our goal here is this: as any laner, any position, you need to think what each of one of your skills offers you: trades, laning, ganking. Farming, okay. Team fighting, etc. So, and then when are you planning on doing that? So, like, are you planning on team fighting? No, not right next, now. Not right now, right? So, yes. Maybe level one point in tomb in order to dive, but like, other than that, this is a really strong laning ability, is it not? It does 180 Soul damage. So rip would allow me to lane for longer, and if like, it's did, 180 damage on. or 180 health, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, maximum. The, you know, if it's eight creeps and two heroes, that will be enough, right? So it'll give me a strong lane sustainability. Yeah. So my point is that you know, level your skills based on what you're needing in the game, and that's something where it's like people ask me, BSJ, when do I max lance on PL, and when do I max Phantom Rush? What is lancing good for? Lance is a slow. Okay. I'm PL. So what's it's, a, what else is it's it mainly, do? Uh, it Out does, of all those things I listed, damage. what did I list? Out of all the things I listed, if you can think of any of them, what does it do for you? So it's a damage. It's a slow. It's not a. It's not a team fight ability. It's a. Uh, it's a pickoff ability. It's a laning strength ability. Yeah. Is it not? It yeah. makes you a better laner because you have a a nuke. Highly spammable too. It's a, yeah. it's a spammable nuke, right? And yes. so. If I need to lane better, I max Lance. What does my Phantom Rush do for me? Uh, Phantom Rush? Phantom Rush allows you to run to either the creeps or, if you're going for the last hits, or it, rush, it rushes you towards the enemy, uh, the enemy hero. Is it more farm-oriented, lane-oriented, gank-oriented? What is it? It's a gank-oriented. Please, the, it's a farm oriented ability. It's a far, it, it, This will tell you how much I've played PL. Yeah, no, it's fine. My point yeah. is, <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Your, your knowledge of PL isn't there. That's a farming <laughs> ability. So, okay. in what cases would I max Lance? In which case would I max Phantom Rush? Uh, oof. I don't know. When I need to win I my lane, I max Phantom Lance. And okay. when I wanna, when I've already won the lane, and I need to farm, I max Phantom Rush. Okay. Because, like, like I said, I don't. I know. So my point is though lands. that process that I, I gave you. I know what you're saying. Why yeah. that to every hero you're playing? Okay. And it applies in this what, laning what as well. Abilities. You know, 
if you're like I, you know, on Underlord, the guy didn't buy a Helm Dom, I, I, I like as his first item, and he tried to. And he, I'm like, you know, what are you doing in your game? And he ended up like that's in one of my coaching sessions too. And he's like, well, I guess I'm just pushing towers. And I'm like, are you team fighting? And he's like, no. I'm like, then why'd you go first item pipe? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, I would what? But, that, I'm saying yeah, like. That's a yeah, yeah, I'm no, saying, I like, if you're that. going to push lanes first, go Helm Dom. And then, once you plan on joining fights, build a pipe. Your your skill builds and item builds should reflect what you plan to do in the near future. It's like, you know, so yesterday on Slark, I got asked, PSJ, why didn't you go Wanda Slark that game? So, what timing am I concerned with on Slark? Every uh, game. You're, you know, Shadowblade. Okay, Shadowblade. So, yeah. what should be my only goal before I get Shadowblade in terms of my items? In terms of your items? Yeah. I'm ganking once I get Shadowblade, right? So yes. what am I doing until I get Shadowblade? You're CSing. I'm CSing, laning, and farming. I'm, la I'm laning and farming. So my items need to make it so I, min I either win or f contest my lane, right? Yes. That's all I need to do. So, how many items am I going to buy before I buy Shadowblade? I would imagine none. Besides your treads. And maybe what else? Yeah. What am I debating between? Treads? A wand. A wand? A yes. Kila? A Kila. A raindrops? Uh, yeah. yeah all these items. Magic. Extra region? Magic My yes. point is, how many of those am I going to buy? Maybe two or three. However many I fucking need to land. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. all I'm, I'm no, saying, no, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm shifting your perspective. So, yeah. it's literally like, what am I doing? I'm laning until I get Shadowblade. Well, I'm not just going to go brown boot Shadowblade because I'll lose my fucking lane. So, <laughs> until I get to Shadowblade, I'm just losing. Like, I can't do that. So, why am I buying only Treads and Aquila? So, if you ever watch me on any hero like Slark or Ursa, when I want to go blink on Ursa... How many items am I buying before Blink? As many as you need to get to that Blink. Okay! <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know what you said. I got uh... you. So definitely would have bought a... Hmm. Uh, never mind. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> no, it's fine, man. I was gonna say something, but it actually didn't apply because Skyrath wasn't here the whole time. A wand wasn't really that important. Yeah, I wasn't um, really too focused. So the yet. main thing I want you to focus on from the whole points I made this time is the the early dominance was really important, and the point of the landing stage in either side is to snowball that early dominance into literally saying this area, whatever this area, meaning around the creeps, wherever that may be in the lane, this is my house. <laughs> if I'm in control, you don't enter it, okay? Like, that's that's what you need to think of it as. So, it's like, if they're not in my house, they can do whatever they want. But the All minute right. they come here, I'm fucking That's, when I, that's yeah. when I start fucking So, with that's, them. that's the main thing I want you to think you about. Can, yeah. You can leave and go, be, go do whatever you want. Yeah, you can... You, can, you know what? If you're, if you're level 5, he's level 3, and you're gonna miss CS to contest him at a bounty rune or something, let him have it. Like, just deny creeps while he's gone. Like, he wants to go pick up a bounty rune? Like... Why do you think offlaners are usually the ones picking up bounty runes? Because they don't get last hits. Yeah, because they're the ones not getting last hits. So if you're the offlaner and you're dominating the lane, let the guy go pick up some bounty runes while you're getting all the denies and shit. Um, okay, so notice creep aggro, how useful it'd be in those spots. Like right yeah. here. Right there. Yeah. It applies more so to offlaning even than, than carry. But it applies just as much. Like it applies. It's just as important. It just doesn't apply as often to carries because usually you're in the advantageous lane. Creep aggro can be used aggressively, but like it's easier to understand how to use it defensively, so I'd rather you get in the habit of that first, and I have the whole video, so we're not going to go any further into that. Um, so I don't mind the idea behind it, but this is how you need to think of it as an offlaner. How are you dying in this lane? How am I dying in this lane? Yeah. If I be, tend to be too aggressive, if I would think. Uh, I want you to spell out abilities, oh, sorts, oh, series oh. of events that lead to uh, me dying. Rubik, Rubik lifts me, uh, throws me towards Jugger, Jugger spins. And, and then maybe who else down. needs to be there? Skyrath. Maybe Skyrath. Sky, right? So Skyrath the minute Rubik lifts you, what are you doing? Uh, running. Or? <laughs> or fighting. Or? I get turned to fight. Doing what you or, just did. 
doing what I just did. TP. Oh, yeah, just duh. TPing. My wait point for is, him to do, wait for him to yeah. lift me. Yeah. Then so TP. like, don't gotcha. try to just TP before he lifts you, right? Like, my point yeah. is like, if you spell out for yourself, especially as an off laner, exactly how I'm gonna die. Like, this is yeah. the point of, like, in the safe lane we talked about with regen, how kills are going to work, what you're trying to have happen in the lane, so that if you know my purpose in the lane as a carry is all I need to do is get CS, so the only time I can test them is when they're messing with my CS, and you see the axe and crystal maiden dicking off over here, you're just going to be like, oh, that doesn't mess with my CS, I'm just going to keep doing this, right? I'm just okay. going to keep hitting creeps. As an offlaner, it's literally like, how am I going to die exactly? What does it take? If you, point, if you paint that out for yourself every single game... What happens if you're wrong? What if you die in a way you didn't expect? I learned from it. You learn from it, period, right? Like you said, oh, I didn't think I would die to just those two heroes. Or like, oh, Jug was only level five when I went for that deny, but I missed the deny, he got level six, and then he killed me because I went up and missed the deny. So maybe next time if he's level five, I'll play a little bit scared of when he's gonna get level six, that kind of thing. Um, but until then, they have to lift you into spin and they have no other TP cancels. So you can just, no reason to overreact in the way you did here. This is an overreaction, TPing before he lifts you. Like that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't expect him to find me. No, the, the point is, though, you see how it's yeah, just no, an overreaction. Yes. That's what it our... Was, it was. It was. Yeah, and we don't want you to ever have to overreact because you... Creep aggro right there, by the way. Right here. Creep aggro. Pull them away from here. They're not safe to really farm right here. Pull them to here. Okay. Pull them here. Okay. I'm saying okay way too much. I know. Fine. Everyone responds differently. Okay. It's all effectively the same. I'm very over, over bearing or whatever. It's fine. So now that he's level six, we have to play a little bit scared. Yep. I start playing a little more defensively now because I I saw he had level six. Yeah, that's fine. A little more. <laughs> okay. Imagine if you had soul rip. Yeah, I could have saw yeah. him and, and killed him. Yeah, it's just like one of those things where just the emphasis on what does each one of your abilities offer you and when are you planning on doing exactly that. So how many points should you put in Decay and Soul Rift? I should at least have, if the lane... if I'm Not a number, how many should I put oh, in? At least one or two into Soul Rift. It's not a number, how many should I put in? How many should you put in? What do these abilities do for you? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, that one heals and does damage, the other one gives me strength. Out of all the strength. categories I listed to you, what do these abilities do for you? Uh, sustainability. And laning. Yes. So how many points do you put in these? <laughs> uh... However many it takes to win your fucking lane, dude. Dear God. I'm you see sorry. what I'm saying? You see the mindset yeah, we're getting at here? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no, no, I see I'm being, pointing I'm probably out being I'm a little, like, No, no, you're yeah, pointing yeah. out when I'm not seeing. Yeah, my point is, these... So people say, BSJ, when do I max Phantom Rush and when do I max Phantom Rush? That's like one of the most common questions. How many points do I put in this? Well, all you have to do is, what does ability fucking do for me? How many <laughs> points in that ability do I need to do that? Okay, like, maybe you need three points in Decay and three points in Soul Rip one game. Maybe you only need the one point in Soul Rip. Maybe your laning stage is over when you hit level 7. So, whatever laning ability... You have, you should only leave it one point because you're leaving the lane anyway. You know, like if you establish also when you think the lane the lane is going to end for you, then that will also determine when you level abilities. The point is these are never answered in flat four times. They're, or they're not at two sometimes. minutes you leave the lane. Like, yeah. you know, as a Sven in that lane, when do I leave? Okay, well, when I die and I don't think I can come back to a good lane. Is that going to be at a certain minute mark? No. No, I can't tell you to leave the lane at seven minutes. You know, you leave no. the lane when that situation happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so that's what I'm trying to say about your skill builds, your item builds, dude. the play style. Like, when do you take fights? Like, when you dive people? Like, you know, I can show you the mechanics of diving people where I mentioned to you, obviously. But, like, yes. other than that, you know, you just got to know when it's correct to dive. What is your purpose for diving? Why are you diving? Like, so this is a game where I just look at it as, you know... A lot more calculated decisions in the early game, and then in terms of uh, you know the over aggression, it was good in terms of knowing you should be aggressive. It's just like next knowing why you're being aggressive. This is good. So this is an example where if you know sometime around like 12 minutes plus you're gonna be team fighting, 
that's when you start leveling Tombstone. So maybe you went like three points and one point and then Tombstone. You know what I mean? Like okay. either way, yeah. you're just like, I'm going to start team fighting approximately now. And notice like, this is good. This is fine. This is a good rotation. And like knowing, a, a, so an important thing, and this is where we're going to wrap up the session is like, if I'm an off laner, am I looking to usually be, okay. I need to ask myself, am I a pusher? Am I a counter ganker? Am I a ganker? Am I, so what's Undying? What's my job? That's uh, Undying's job is a team fighter, disruption. Okay, team fighter, does he gank? No. What does he do? He, he team fights in a manner of fights. what? In like, a matter of... He doesn't initiate the fight, so how does how do fights usually happen? It usually, someone initiates, Tombstone goes up, and then they fight around Tombstone. Would you say it's usually the other team initiating? Oh, yeah, he's a so counter So he's a counter-initiating team fighter, right? Like, yeah. he doesn't start fights, so like, you know, you're not gonna teepee top saying, hey, let's gank this guy, right? No, I'm just well, giving you an example is... of why I'm telling you this whole thing is correct. You teepee top, because you saw your teammate getting gone on, and you're like, oh, gotta turn this, so you show up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah. If you recognize that for every hero, though, you're probably you've probably played a lot of Undying games, is what I'm guessing. Is, uh, no? I have Undying is my fourth highest hero. Yeah. With 55 uh, 55 percent win rate. Okay, so it's your fourth highest hero, though. So my point is, yeah. you're just doing this by default. Okay. The point yeah. of hero spammers and why I get so upset at hero spammers is because they don't actually understand Dota. They just played the hero so many times that they started to recognize the patterns on that hero and they do things correctly on that hero and the minute you put them on some other hero they're like uh what like if you, <laughs> if, you know if you think of pattern recognition and like things of like what your hero's purpose is so it's like my hero's purpose is to counter gank you're never teeping in to start a fight you know what i mean like you're teeping in this like if you're an omni the only time you're going to look to TP is if you think you're going to turn a fight or they're going to go on your carry. So you're there preemptively. That's the only time you'll ever go, though. You're not going to go to start a fight. And if you're, you know, like a PA, if they're diving my tower, I'm going to TP because I can punish it. But, like, if they're diving my tower and I'm life stealer, the only time I'm going to show up is when I can TP in and know I'm going to open wound somebody. Like, that's the only time I'm going to TP in because if I can't get open wounds off, why am I TPing? As a life stealer, you know what I mean. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. So like, if I know on that hero when I'm looking to rotate, why I rotate, what my hero actually does, then you'll know when to rotate. And so on my point is, you did it correctly on Undying because it's your fourth most played hero. But I want you to be able to do it on all these other heroes. So it's like if you yeah, were yeah. in a badin, the proper the proper response would probably be to have a helm dom and be killing their tier one. It happened to me yesterday. I'm like, I'll, I'm ready to TP if I have to. I literally said that in my Abaddon game yesterday. And Moon Meander goes, do what Abaddon's do and push their tower. <laughs> like, don't, <laughs> you know, don't don't come show up. Just, like, go kill their tower. Just and that's push. Like, yeah, just push. And, like, my point is to know what your hero does and do it. Yeah. But, and, like, but know ahead of time. You know? Like, no, if some fight breaks out anywhere, whoever it is, am I showing up? Or am I, what am I doing? Or... What are my options? If my options are to show up or push, then I have to ask myself, when that fight happens, am I able to push? Oh, I'm not? Okay, I'm going to go help. Or yes. am I able to help? Okay, no, I'm not. I'm going to go push. Like, know whatever your choices are. Know what the capabilities of your hero potentially are and base it off of also, like, maybe a hero's team fight capability is based on an item. Maybe that hero needs a blink. Maybe they need a mech. Maybe they need, you know... Maybe they just need some sort of item in order to fight. So you're gonna be, yeah. you're gonna say, okay, well, I'm not really gonna show up to fights, guys, until I have this. And it's yeah, like, like an axe, an axe yeah, or a master. Yeah, yeah. Master would yeah. Go my a point is like, I I had the axe literally show up to three team fights prior to blink, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, you're <laughs> like, not gonna get it. Like done. all you're doing is delaying your blink so that the future team fights are even worse, right? Like they're just as bad or worse because you showed up to fights when you weren't ready yet. Like, that's just as bad as not showing up to fights when you are ready. Like, that's just, you know, it's just as bad. So, um, wrapping up the session here, this first rotation is always super important for any role. But it's just understanding what your purpose in the game is. Like, if I know, like, hey, I'm a counter initiator, I know I'm a tower pusher, then I know whenever they go on me, I need to be a counter, counter initiator. It's like, I know whenever my team is pushing a tower, I need to be pushing, whether it's with them or another tower like meaning we're creating two pushes at once or you know 
what, how does my hero best use his capabilities? That will not only help you with the first rotation and, like, your decision-making on that regard, but it'll also help with your items and levels. So, like, notice how you hadn't team fought until now, right? So, up until this point, Tombstone served very little purpose. Yeah, there was kind of no point for me to So, you just had, like, four wasted levels, yeah. right? That's my point, is we want to look at efficiency based on what do your abilities do, when are you going to need to do that? And every hero is oh. different, and that's how I want All you right. to think about your abilities. It'll help you a lot um, in terms of, like, trying to learn new heroes. You should try to, like, and the times that I'm struggling, right, is, like, play styles on heroes that I'm not used to. Like, when, I was, when I'm still learning Visage, like, conceptually, I think I know what I'm supposed to do on the hero. All it comes down to now is mechanics, but, like, with conceptually, it's like, I understand what each one of his abilities does. So I know, even in a game, people go, BSJ, how do you know how many points to put in Overpower and Fury Swipes? I literally got asked that yesterday on Ursa. Well... Fury swipes, trades. Overpower, kills. Urshock is good for contesting lane. Yep. What am I doing? In the game. <laughs> it's that simple. Am I contesting yeah. lane? Do I need Urshock? Am I just trading? Do I it need all, Fury swipes? It, it, it all depends on the laning. When is my blink dagger coming up? Yeah. Okay, if I'm going to get a super early blink dagger, like at 8 minutes, my skill build was 242. Because if I'm going to gank with my blink dagger, I want max overpower. Like, the point is, you just need to think about what each ability of 